And going over two more classes here that I feel require a little bit more thought than just pew-pew. Uh, it's going to be Medic, who's obviously trying to heal and revive people, and Anti-Tank, which, to be fair, you're still slaying some bodies here, just in a different way. Uh, the Anti-Tank is going to start out with three loadouts. Uh, it's for all factions. I believe the British and Russians actually have four loadouts, but the Americans and Germans have three. Uh, starting off standard issue, you get your rifle, your bazooka, which is your main long-range AT weapon. Uh, you can use it to take out garrisons and outposts as well. We'll show some examples of that. you just got to be pretty accurate with it. It takes a while to get used to the drop-off for it, but you'll learn that over time. Uh, gun crew is our next one. you got a rifle again. This time you got a wrench and a hammer. That wrench is going to be used to build an AT gun, which is uh, pretty much a stationary vehicle, unfortunately. Uh, you can rotate it 360, and it, it's kind of slow. But, you know, you get used to that, so whenever you're placing these things down, you want to make sure it's in a good spot before you actually place it, and we'll go over that. Uh, the gun goes down like a blueprint, like the en engineer's thing, so it's going to go down first, and then you have to actually build it up with the hammer. Uh, this means that when you put it down, if it's in a shitty spot, you're not going to use those supplies right away until it's actually built up with the hammer. The next class is the ambusher. You get the satchel and the AT mines, the anti-tank mines. We've gone over those plenty of times, but you'll also get a submachine gun now. Uh, one of the big differences with the ambusher is that the British actually get uh, AP mines. Well, one AP mine as well with that, while none of the other classes do. And the other major difference here is that the Soviet Union is going to start out with the PTRS-41, an anti-tank rifle. Uh, you can use that on vehicles. It cannot destroy garrisons and outposts. I've tested that out. It does not work. And uh, their fourth loadout is going to get the uh, bazooka, the same bazooka that the U.S. have. So the first one... First class you got to start off with gives you the PTRS, which it's not bad. You got a bunch of those shooting at one tank. It's going to piss them off. They're harder to spot, so you can kind of hide and be a little bit further because it is a rifle. It's not a rocket, so you can hide out further, and uh, they're not going to see a smoke trail come coming at them or just the rocket in general coming at them. They're going to have to look for muzzle flashes, which there's going to be a lot of muzzle flashes on the battlefield. Let's see, the British also get the anti-tank gun, but theirs is unlocked at four. I'm assuming that's the boys' AT rifle. Probably got a little bit more ammo than the uh, the PTRS, but otherwise it's the same thing. Standard issue gets you your Piat, which is, you know, in game terms, the same same thing as a bazooka. In real life, it's a pretty much different system, but we're not going to go over that here. Just use it like a bazooka or a Panzer Shrek, same thing. Uh, gun crew, same thing. Ambusher, like I said, the only difference in that is the a AP mine. Uh, let's get in game and see how these things work. Alright, so before we actually get to shooting this thing, uh, for all you nerds out there, there is no backblast. So you don't gotta worry about checking your backblast and yelling rocket and all that shit. Uh, you're not gonna kill anyone if they're standing behind you. You can shoot the thing indoors. Not gonna matter. Um, there is no arming distance on this thing, so if you shoot it from here, it's not gonna be a dud. It's gonna fucking explode and it's gonna kill you. So keep keep that in mind. You know, this ain't the future. We don't have arming distance on shit yet. The second that thing leaves a tube and gets pulled off its little arming string thing, the thing's gonna fucking explode whatever it hits. Now, uh, another thing to note before you shoot this thing is that it's gonna drop off quite a bit. Uh, the propellant doesn't actually push it too far. But, uh, probably on a flat level surface, you got maybe 50 to 60 yards that it's going to travel until it starts to drop off. So, just to show you a quick example here, if we aim at that house, we barely made it past that Belgian gate there. Uh, I don't know what the yardage is on that, but we're at an elevated position, so it's going to be further than normal. I'm just using this because it's a lot easier to show you at an elevated position, but if you must know, that was actually 100 meters. Not bad. Alright, so, again, if you're aiming at that house, probably going to want to aim up. And there we go. Nailed that shot, actually. Not bad. Now, if you're out of ammo, you can either redeploy and uh, spawn back in. You only get two rockets to start. Or, again, look for any sort of supply drops with the bombs on them. Any airdrop supplies and most, uh, I think the Jeep drops uh, explosive ammo. Your support guys have it. Some riflemen have it as well. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, keep an eye out for those classes, too. If you see them, ask them. Hopefully they'll have it. Maybe not, though. Now, uh, shooting this thing does require a little bit of skill, uh, especially at moving targets over 50 meters out. It's going to take a while to get used to it. You'll eventually learn it, but uh, there's a few tips and tricks here. So, for example, if you're aiming at something, the best trick I can give you is ping it before you shoot at it. So right there, you're going to know that guy's at 50 meters now. 
Uh, just as an, as purely as an example here, we're just going to uh, ping that guy again. You could see that ping through the site. So as long as you keep that uh, front site post lined up with that uh, ping, you should be able to hit your your uh, target. Now going from there, a lot of people have you know no uh, what is it not notepads, sticky notes and shit on the side of their screen that they'll use, or uh, you know they just get used to lining up certain marks on the rear site here as well. Uh, the only one I know of is at 100 yards on a flat and level surface, so ooh, that's a little too far. Right here, if we wanted to hit this poor dude here at about 100 meters out, the best thing to do is line it up with the bottom of the front side post hole there. So right about there, that got us our hit. Now when you do shoot the thing, it's good to keep in mind exactly where your last shot was because there's going to be plenty of times that you're shooting at something from the same spot, and if that did not hit that guy and it went above him, you're going to know, okay, i got to aim down a bit from, again, the bottom of that post. Just mark that again, from the bottom of that little peephole there. Uh, and, you know, if it went too high or if it went too low, then you know you got to aim up a little bit higher. So keep that in mind when you shoot your first rocket because when you're shooting at certain things at a further distance out, hopefully you got a spotter and they can tell you, hey, that was high. You remember exactly where you were aiming last time and you could put a new rocket at that. So hopefully right on target. And now uh, all that gets multiplied 10 times when you got trucks moving around at 200 yards out and you're trying to hit it. You got to try to do the old ambush method where you're going to, you know, make a ping way out there, aim up, and just hope that you can time everything out right. It, it gets pretty intense. Uh, I've seen people that got really fucking good at it. Maybe one day you'll get that good too. But for now, uh, the 100 meters trick is the only thing I can really show you because I don't really get to use AT that much. And unfortunately, even though it shows that we have the sights, you cannot adjust those at all. But uh, yeah, it looks like that 100 meter shot was pretty much right in the center of this dude's chest. So that's a beautiful shot. It's also a really fucking strong scarecrow. Now obviously for instructional purposes, again here, we're shooting at uh, German scarecrows, infantry. Which, you're not going to be using this weapon for in infantry. There's going to be a few times where, yes, you might actually see a big enough group of guys that's close enough together and you can hit them. But the splash damage on these things isn't that much, so... We got that one dude sitting there inside the house. Even if we put a round through this window, it might not kill him. It might just wound him. But that wound might be good enough where, you know, let's say that's a fucking machine gun and he's lighting up your dudes and he can't get through here. You can just throw a rocket up in that window. That's going to wound him. Hopefully that's long enough for him to get that bandage out and apply that bandage so that you guys can get closer to get some grenades in there. Or even just push the, the house itself or light it up with our own machine guns or whatever the hell works out. Uh, you can use this to take out garrisons and outposts. Uh, if you see an outpost, you don't have to be dead on as long as you're within the splash zone, splash radius of the rocket. It'll kill it. A garrison, you do have to be directly on. So that's where that whole uh, adjusting your aim through your aim point thing is going to be. Where you're keeping an eye on where you let shot your last rocket. And again, hopefully you got a spotter or a teammate with you who's just going to tell you, hey, that was high. Aim down a bit. Hey, that was low. Aim up a bit. Makes sense. But again, that garrison has to be dead on. So hopefully it's exactly 50 meters or exactly 100 meters. And you could uh, judge it from there. Or if you can get into that range, go for it. Uh, I've seen some of my guys take out garrisons at fucking 400 meters, which is incredible. But it might have taken four rockets to do it. The main use for your rockets uh, is vehicles, especially tanks. Uh, the American bazooka kind of sucks in this game. Uh, honestly, I don't really think you can even penetrate the light tanks from the front. So just remember, if you're on the Americans, the ass. You always want to go for the ass of tanks. Even if it's a light tank, go for the ass. Uh, we don't have Pumas or recon vehicles on this to show you that, but uh, Puma, as long as you hit it in the body, not the wheels, you could kill it in one hit. Uh, that's any recon vehicle for every faction with every bazooka or... Uh, rocket propelled rocket, I guess. But again, as Americans, just always go for the ass. That's that's going to be your best bet, is that ass shot, every single time. Uh, if you see a heavy tank, I know it's, you know, you probably don't know all the German tanks by heart unless you're a World War II buff, so... If you do see a tank in the front and you're on the Americans, just try to, try to pop a shot in the tracks. You know, that's going to be your best bet. That'll at least slow it down a bit. You could definitely penetrate the tracks from the front, the side, the back, whatever. And hitting it in the tracks is going to, what we call, track the vehicle, which means he's going to be stuck in first gear and he's going to be going slow as hell. Hopefully it'll give you plenty of time to rearm with your rockets, flank around the back of them, or even get a get an engineer up on the guy. But again, keep that in mind. 
if you pop out from around a corner and there's a tank staring you in the face, you can either save your rockets and try to get up behind it, or try to get some rockets in its tracks and slow it down a bit. But before we go over uh, no penetration, penetration, or just uh, bad hits and good hits, uh, there's audio and visual cues for both of those. I do want to go over the angles first. So if you're trying to hit a tank, uh, just again, for example here, let's say you could penetrate this uh, fucking panther in the side. You're going to want to try to get as perpendicular to it as you can. So you want to get right on the side of it, have the least amount of angle that you're shoot shooting it at. Because if you hit it anything less than a 45, like this to the side here, you're not going to do shit. The round's actually just going to ricochet off, and we'll show you a quick example of that. Uh, you might get lucky, like this Scarecrow German here, he might get hit by this fucking rocket when it uh, ricochets, so... Quick example. That would have killed that motherfucker. That guy would have been dead. Uh, same thing if you're shooting from an elevated position. It kind of sucks, because a lot of times you're going to ricochet off these, unless you can find an angle on the tank that's a uh, that's perpendicular with you. Because, for example, let's say this uh, little Panzer II here, you're going to take a shot at it from here, and you're thinking, oh man, I got this guy, he's dead. That's going to fall down on somebody's head now, and they are not going to have a good fucking day. I guess your rockets can bounce off the back of the tank too, so if you got a shot right here and you're thinking, oh man, I got this guy in the ass, nope. You're just going to kill fucking Jean-Claude Van Damme's uncle or grandpa or whatever, and uh, we might not see him again, so let's try not to go killing people that we like. Jean-Claude Van Damme even French? I don't know. I don't care. Whatever. Uh, so try to go for those perpendicular shots. And, uh, I mean, you know, if you really want to try that ricochet kill, shit, man, go for it. Let's see if we can hit that guy right there and have some fun with this real quick. And we're going for this guy, this kraut, right here. Oh, nope, that one didn't work out. Uh, that's a good example of a bad hit, but, yep, shit. See that right there? Hit that angle. That didn't do shit on it. It was like a pretty safe distance. So, a bad hit you're going to see is just, or a non-penetrating hit. I'll say, uh, you'll see it's just gonna, the rocket's just gonna shatter into a million pieces, there's just gonna be tiny sparks, uh, you're gonna have a little scorch mark on the tank maybe, and you're not really gonna hear any sound except for the rocket exploding. So that right there, not a good hit. No penetration, you got that little scorch mark, that's about it. Now when you do hit a tank, uh, and it penetrates, you're gonna hear a nice loud noise that sounds like steel being ripped apart, and you're gonna see some sparks, some smoke, and a little fire. That's our good hit. There's our sparks coming out. That's good. You'll see that turn into a little fire and some smoke. There you go. That's a good hit. That penetrated. That did some fucking damage. Here, that's uh, an American Heavy. You can see I already hit that once in the side, and this fucking Panzer Trek goes right the fuck through it like it's nothing. Still need three hits on it, but it's uh, it's actually doing some damage to the side that would not be happening with the bazooka. And that's an American Light Tank. Panzer Trek's penetrating that from the front. That thing's fucking down. Uh, well, we got this thing out. It's also worth noting that this is your view. Uh, it it sucks. Good luck trying to kill shit with this thing. But again, use your marks. So if you got it, you know, put a ping on that. Aim up. I don't know. I'll figure it out. All right, we're gonna hit up the second loadout, which, uh, like I said before, gives you the wrench, the 57 millimeter anti-tank cannon, and the hammer. All right, so you just unlocked your anti-tank gun class. You're looking for a place to put some uh, to put your gun. Look on the map. Any of these supplies you see, as long as there's 50 there, you can put a gun within 50 meters of that. Just make sure those supplies aren't being used for a garrison first. You can always ask your squad leader, or just keep an eye on the chat. Or again. Have some general battlefield awareness, look around, see what's happening. If the point's, you know, 700 meters off to the fucking west, I'm pretty sure you'll be fine putting a gun there. But to actually place that gun, you're just going to go to your wrench, and you're going to get the blueprint for it, which for some reason always uh, spawns facing to the right, I don't know why, so use Q and E. Best thing to do is line it up so that the gun is facing away from you, and just figure out exactly where you want to put it, because... If you're trying to put it down and it's sideways and you think, oh man, I'm going to hit that panther right there and you place it right here, your gun's actually going to be facing that way and now you got to turn it. So best bet, turn that gun, rotate it. Make sure you're lined up. Now look at that, we're right on target here. It takes a minute to actually place it, but when you do place this, again, it's a blueprint, not the actual gun. So it's just going to sit there 
The supplies will still be there. It will show up on the map as a gun, but the supplies are still there because we haven't actually built it yet. To build it, all we got to do is get that hammer out. It's going to tell us build, 50, 50 being the supplies. So the second we build this thing up, those supplies are going to be gone. Now, if you don't like the spot that you put it, all you got to do is actually just take the blueprint out again and move it. You don't have to actually dismantle that blueprint at all. You can just replace the blueprint and it'll get rid of your old one and place a new one. Just like most of the other uh, deployables in this game, you can only have one at a time, so, you know, ammo boxes and, uh, what do you call it, uh, supply crates and whatnot. Same premise. Once you place a new one, if the old one is still there, it's just going to replace it. This also works when the gun is actually built, so if you have this gun built and you want to move it, and you have another 50 supplies, as again, that 50 supplies is going to disappear once we actually build it. But if... Well, let's just go over this quick. You'll see those supplies in the background there, and poof, they're gone. Now, if you do have another 50 supplies, and you want to move it because you don't like this spot, well, just put down another blueprint. I know it says item limit reached, replace oldest item. That's what's going to be happening, is we're going to be replacing the oldest item. We're not actually going to put this one down, because I don't have any supplies over here. So, uh, we'll go over the gun now. So, just like vehicles, which I have not gone over in this game, you're just going to run up to it. You'll see, press, uh, enter or press F to enter it, hold F to enter it, not press, whatever, regardless of that. These count as vehicles, technically, uh, they are stationary in the fact that they can't move forward and backwards, but you can spin it around 360 if you really need to. Uh, it's going to be slow as hell and take a long ass time, so that's why I said make sure you have it lined up where you want it before you place that blue blueprint. Now they do act as a uh, pretty good cover too, so if you're trying to take that little farmhouse, you can crouch down behind this and... You're not going to be able to shoot through it at all, which is an, one nice thing, but uh, it is kind of easy to get some shots through this thing. Uh, not through those holes, but through the sides here. Your ass is probably going to be sticking out while you're shooting it. These things do require two people. They don't require two people, actually. They would uh, I'd say the recommended crew is a two-person gun crew, because one of these people is going to have to load the gun while the other one shoots it. So usually you're going to enter in the first seat, use your movement keys to actually move the gun around, left, right, up, down, whatever, that'll move it around a bit. And then uh, there are lateral limits on this, so there's only a certain amount of distance you can turn the gun to the left before the guy in the secondary seat is going to have to turn the entire chassis to the left or right. So right now we're not turning just the gun, we're turning the entire chassis left. And to do that, you literally just hold left and right, and that's it. So now you can see it's uh, it's off to the left a little bit of where we actually placed it because we did face it place it facing that panther, but that's how slow this thing turns. Now the ammo for this is a whole other story. We'll go over that real quick here because it's not just regular ammo. You don't have a certain amount. I mean, technically you have infinite ammo as long as you have the resources for it. So I'm just opening up the map here for a second, but look uh, down here to the bottom right. 57 millimeter cannon empty, meaning we don't have a shell loaded. Again, that's the second seat position. The second seat guy is going to be loading your rounds. But this five is our ammo. That doesn't mean we have five rounds. That means it's going to cost five resources to make it. And what kind of resources? Well, that little box should be a little bit recognizable because it's the same box as up here. That is a munition. So those munitions, every time you shoot one round, you're using five mun munitions. So keep that in mind. It's always good to look at that. If you only have 80 munitions at the moment, probably not a good idea to get on this gun and start blasting away because you're going to be blowing through your commander's fucking resources really fast and he's going to be wondering where the fuck is all my resources going. Now when you actually load the thing, again, the second seat, all he's going to be doing is pressing R. And you'll see that line uh, start to fill up. It says loading. Now it says ready. Now that that shell is in and ready, we can't take it back out. So look at the resources up here, top left. 495. We used one shell. That one shell, we're never getting those resources back. Hopefully, you make those fucking resources count. Now, when it comes to the AT guns, they can penetrate anything. Anything. But, it's going to take a lot of rounds to hit. Again, it's probably best to wait and get an ass shot on the tank, but if that's not the case and you're shooting from 600 fucking meters, shoot the front of the tank. Fuck it, who cares? There we go. That's one through it. As a solo player, you can just switch seats and keep loading this thing up. It's going to be a lot slower than it should be. But, you're still going to be able to get these hits. That's what matters. 
Again, remember to keep an eye on your resources. So far, we've used up 15, but we just blew that panther up. So I think that 15 munitions was well worth blowing up a panther and not wasting 300 on a fucking precision strike. Uh, you saw that wasn't the fastest thing right there, and if we were shooting at that panther in a game and he had a gunner, that gunner would have been locked onto us after the first shot and more than likely killed us, so... It is kind of a good thing to try to wait and get a better shot. Uh, I guess the ideal position would be where that Panzer II is down on the left, but uh, actually this is a pretty good example here. If we can't turn right anymore, and we want to hit that Panzer IV up on the hill. We'll see that the gun is rotated, but the chassis is not, so we're going to have to rotate that cha uh, chassis, which means if you have a secondary gunner, just tell him, hey, rotate the fucking thing to the right. Let him know when you're lined up. We're just going to keep rotating this a little bit more. That should be good enough. We switch back in the seat, and there we go. We got that shot now. You do have to be careful of things like this. Because that little post right there, we can actually hit that post. And sometimes it's going to glitch out, and we're going to fucking hit it. And it's going to blow you up. Let's uh, see if this actually works. So you got your round loaded. You're ready to go. You're thinking, oh, I'm going to track this fucking guy, and you take the shot. Luckily, we didn't hit that post, but it actually worked out. Now, when you are shooting the AT gun, again, uh, the further away from you that the tank is looking, the better off it's going to be. So, like I said, that Panzer II right now would be in the ideal position because he doesn't even know that we're kind of off to his right and behind him. That Panzer IV is not bad either. He's going to be looking for us. It's going to take him a second. You should be able to get enough shots off to kill him in time. But that Panther is staring straight at us, uh, almost straight at us. He probably would have gotten us. Now when you are actually placing these guns, it is very wise to be aware of your surroundings. And I don't just mean for shit that you can hit, but your camouflage. Because you can clearly see this thing being out in the open like this. Easy as fuck to see. It's a darkish green. It's kind of almost the same green as our tanks. Uh, the best thing is it's going to blend in with bushes and shit. Super fucking easy, so. The best thing to do would be, if you want to aim down this road, put it in front of these bushes. Uh, the only bad note, it's going to be a little bit more camouflaged, but the only bad thing about that is a tank might be able to hit a bush behind you and kill the entire crew before they can even fucking see you. But again, at least you're going to be camouflaged. It's going to take them another second to actually get a shot off at you. Uh, these guns are great for area denial when it comes to cities. You can put one right in the fucking road. And usually, before that tank's turret can see you, you're going to see the front end of that tank. And if you pop a shot right at the front end, that tank might fucking slam the brakes and shove it in reverse and just back the fuck out because they don't know what the hell's hitting them. All they know is they just got hit in the front by something that can penetrate them in the front. They're going to back out a bit. Hopefully you can get enough shots off on them again to kill them, but uh, having a full crew of two on this, you can get a shot off shit almost every three fucking seconds, which is way faster than the tanks. That takes six seconds to, to reload. Now, I know in everyone's mind, uh, hilltops are a great spot for guns. You're thinking, oh shit, I could put a gun right up here and I could hit fucking anything. It's going to be fucking awesome. I'm going to place it right next to this fucking tree. And they'll never see me. That's great and all. Yeah, you got a little bit of cover on your left there. But uh, what you got to remember, the biggest thing is your backdrop, your silhouette. This gun, from down there, it's going to be silhouetted against that sky pretty fucking good. So instead of placing it over there, I know it's probably not a good example, but I don't have a lot of supplies to build it. But instead of uh, placing it here where you got the sky as your backdrop, you might want to consider, all right, that's where you're trying to aim. Maybe put it all the way over here instead so you got these trees as a backdrop. So now instead of having the sky as your backdrop, you got those trees, and look how much harder that's going to be to see. The further out you go, the harder it's going to be to see. I mean, right now, obviously, we're on the decline, but technically that gun can still hit us, and you can barely even fucking see it from here. If there is no backdrop, and you don't have trees behind you, I'd suggest putting it a little bit on the decline, so at least you can use the top of the hill to conceal you if you're just a little bit lower than the apex of that hill. And yes, hills are a fucking wonderful spot, because hell yeah, we do have... A beautiful range here. We could see quite a bit of shit. Now, again with these, uh, they're not bad against infantry. They're pretty good. You can still take out garrisons and OPs with them. You got a bunch of Germans in cover behind those logs. Put a round right the fuck behind it. That'll fuck their day up. That'll probably kill all of them. No big fucking deal there. Uh, 
Uh, but again, watch your ammo, watch your resources, because if you don't have enough resources, or you're running really low and the commander's trying to get a bombing run going, and you're just sitting here blasting single guys with headshots, uh, you're gonna run out of resources real fast, and the commander's gonna wonder, why the fuck am I using five munitions for every dead German? Because, quite a bit. Quite a bit. You don't want to be doing that. Don't be wasting the fucking resources. It's gonna fuck over the rest of your team while you're sitting in the back having fun on your gun. Alright, so PTRS, PTRS-41, great weapon. Uh, mostly you should be used against tanks, but if you really have to, you can blast some infantry with it. Uh, to use it, you're just going to find a service to deploy it on. You'll put it on those bipods there, and then you're just going to be uh, looking around. There's no scope or anything. Oh, yeah, we've got some guys way the fuck out there. Maybe we can get a shot off at them. Uh, ballistics with this thing. Ah, lost that guy. Ballistics with this thing, it will drop off at about 100. So just keep an eye on where, how far out you're shooting. So this guy's going to be about 128. Might have to aim a tiny bit above him to hit him if he runs around here. Uh, otherwise, when you're shooting tanks and shit with these, kind of the same thing. If you get up behind it, oh, hold on a sec. There we go. Blew that motherfucker up. Saint Mary, probably. Yeah, Roger. I'm just finishing off the assholes back here. All right, so right there, we got a German Panther rolling down the road. Uh, we're gonna do the smart thing. We're gonna wait for him to pass us. But in the meantime, we're gonna try to flank around a little bit. Sounds like he's a little closer than I thought. We should be able to get this thing set up and put some fucking rounds right in the ass of him. There he goes right there. Right, good enough, now that he's passed, we'll just start hitting him. That's five shots straight in his ass. That might have just dropped his fucking engine. Getting some good hits on that uh, Tiger's or Panther's fucking engine. Oh, you can see he's struggling. His engine's definitely down. He's trying to turn that turret around to find us. We might actually be able to take this tank out all by our fucking self here. And one more mag might do it. Yeah, that Panther's engine is definitely fucking down. I'm gonna keep putting rounds in his ass. There we go. Panther's down. Alright, so that took, uh, was that three mags? Four, four mags? I don't fucking remember, but that's how easily these things can take out tanks. Not as, uh, not as easy as a couple rockets, but still, we got up right the fuck behind it. Got lucky with that one, to be honest, and we were able to just keep throwing rounds in his ass. We dropped his engine in one mag, because all five of those rounds hit, and that was it. He was stuck right there, couldn't move, couldn't turn, couldn't even get his fucking turret around in time to hit us. Yeah, fuck that tank. So I've got an engineer going to satchel it, so our best bet now is just going to be to take those tracks out, knowing that the en engineer is here. Ooh, that's a little light tank, a little baby tank. Right, he's going to be trying to bust the fuck out of here now. Ah, uh, fucked that thing up pretty good, but he ended up getting me. I think his tracks are down, maybe his engine too. So, that, uh, probably wasn't the best bet for us. More than likely, we should have, uh, actually stopped, or we should have waited to get his engine and dropped his fucking engine, and then that engineer next to us could have ran in there and fucking taken the thing out, but I got greedy. These things happen. That's the heavy tank on my ping. Alright, so we see that Tiger's fucking rolling up here. We're gonna see if we can wait. Maybe he'll roll right up on Lumber. We can get a shot off at his ass. We do have a machine gun fucking laying down fire on us, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, he's fucking close. Here we go. Decent ass shot at this guy right now. There's Germans all around us, but let's go for it. Probably gonna get shot at from the right here, but we might be able to take this thing as a fucking ass out. Come on, baby.
Tank is, uh, his engine's out. He's on my ping. He is disabled. Alright, and that about does it for the anti-tank class. Uh, you've seen some good examples here. I hope. Uh, hopefully you can get a better understanding of where to hit shit. I know I didn't go over the British, uh, Piat, Piat, I don't know how to pronounce that still. I probably never will, but... Uh, I'm assuming it's kind of in between the bazooka and the Panzer Shrek, but again, like I've been saying this whole time, just go for the ass if you can. If not, maybe put some in the tracks, or if you want to do some experimentation with the British uh, anti-tank launcher yourself, go for it, have a blast, enjoy the fucking game. The next class we're going to be going over is the Medic, which is a nice easy one here. All the classes, all the loadouts are pretty much the same on all of these. There's really no difference. Uh, your first loadout is always going to get a rifle with low ammo. You only have two magazines for this uh, carbine here, which is 15 round mags, I believe, so that's 30 rounds. Uh, your pistol, you got six, four, six magazines for it. It's a little bit more than 30, which is nice, but at the same time, your goal here isn't to be shooting people. It's to be reviving people, so you get some smoke grenades to help you get to those guys that are out in the open. Your 20 morphine serrets, which are called different things in all the classes, like this is morphine ampule. Uh, Soviet Union, they just they, they high-five each other and they're right back in the fight because fucking Russians are nuts. And the British have just straight-up morphine. Otherwise, they all get 20 bandages. All the classes get uh, 20 bandages. You do bandage guys a lot faster than they can bandage themselves, so keep that in mind. Uh, the main thing you're going to want to be doing with this is if you're rolling with your squad the entire time, you want to be bandaging them before they have to bandage themselves. Let them save their bandages so if they do get separated from the squad, at least this way they still have some bandages left if they get hit. Otherwise, you got 20 bandages, fucking use the things. Now this is another one that we're going to have to get into an actual game here to uh, show you some examples of, because practice range just ain't going to do it. I kind of wish they had some wounded guys lying around, It'd make it a lot easier. I also wish they had different factions in the practice range. Unfortunately they don't. It's better than nothing. You could still jump in there, fuck around, and learn stuff yourself. Uh, otherwise we'll go in game and I'll uh, show you how the medics work. Alright, so first things first, uh, Medic is obviously not supposed to be a uh, point man type class where you're fucking charging headfirst in there in front of your whole squad. You want to try to stay back. Your main job here is healing people with bandages and reviving them with those fucking syringes. Uh, there is no Geneva Convention in the game, so if you're a Medic and you run out into the fucking open, you will get fucking shot. No one's going to stop and wait and check if you're a fucking Medic or not, they're just going to blow you the fuck away. Uh, medics are armed in this game. But you don't have a whole lot of ammo. For example, this carbine only has, if you look in the bottom right, two magazines for it. That's it. I got 30 shots. Uh, pistol's got a few, few more, but, uh, you know, pistol's probably going to be for close range emer emergency uses. But for the most part, you're just going to be running around trying to revive and heal people. Now, the main things you're going to want to be on the lookout for... Just hang on one second. Holy shit. Alright, uh, back to what I was saying. The main things you're going to want to be on the lookout for is a couple icons. You'll get a giant bandage icon like that. That means that guy needs a bandage, or you'll get that syringe to the right, which means that guy needs to be revived. Uh, sometimes those, uh, the bandage ones are going to disappear a lot because guys are going to be using their own bandages, but if that syringe ever dis disappears, that means they gave up, they didn't want to wait for you to come. Uh, or, or they got blown up, their body got destroyed. So we're going to try to get to these guys now. It looks like they're just going to give up anyway. I'm coming. Enemy second floor, you said? Yeah, I guess so. Alright, I took that foot. You got any other fuckers in here? Don't forget to use your mic, that's very important. Proximity check can uh, make or break a revive here, so if you're running up on a guy, uh, you can ask him where he got killed from, he can tell you right where the Germans are, and at least you know you got to keep that area covered more than some other spot that you're looking. So anyone that's uh, done any first aid before knows the first thing to do is check the scene uh, for safety. Placing Basically, we're just going to secure down. the shit out of it, so... That guy's out in the middle of the field. If we go out there right now, we're dead, so we're going to throw some smokes between us and the enemy. We don't necessarily want to throw them directly on top of the guy, because when we do revive him, he's going to be confused as shit and not know where he's looking. Looks like now that we got that smoke out, we're going to go for it. Oh, 
Now once you get up to him, take your syringe out, obviously pick this up, don't forget to bandage him. Ah, you good. Crow, I, I got you bro, hang tight, let's get some smoke. On the way. When it comes to trying to revive multiple guys at once, uh, your best bet is going to try to kind of get a priority list going. So me personally, I like to get squad leaders up first. They can put down an OP to get more guys in, and then medics will come next so they can heal more. I got your uh, If we do have multiple, ca if it's a mass casualty situation, they can get more guys up fast. I'm right here, man. I'm right here. I got you. Right, hey, stand by for your bandage, man. I got your bandage. Get your gun. It's out. Right, you guys all good. Your second medic loadout here now. You're going to lose your rifle. You're going to get 16 mags for your pistol, which is kind of nice. But again, it's a pistol. Your job's not to be running around trying to headshot dudes from a fucking mile out. Uh, you also get two more smoke grenades for a total of four, and now you get a medical supply crate, uh, which you could put down. It actually just looks like an ammo box, and guys can resupply their bandages from that if they're out. Alright, so basic conclusion for the medic here is uh, do your fucking job. Heal and revive people. Use those bandages. Use those fucking syringes. Don't go running out into the open. Check the area first. Use your smokes if you have to. Use your voice chat to figure yeah, out what the enemy is. Try to stick with your squad. Good luck, and I hope to see you out there soon. Sometimes you just get super fucking unlucky and artillery hits you dead on and kills you and everyone you're fucking working on.